dealing with a vet and dealing with PTSD, it's not a cookie cutter uh, response. Um, everyone is, is different and every vet reacts differently to uh, not only uh, contacts with law enforcement but also uh, contacts with the healthcare system. I always hear dispatches go out for veterans with PTSD and it, it's almost like a tone to gear up for a fight and I don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want to go in there for a fight because if you fight a veteran you're always going to lose in one way or another. You don't want that to happen. Being a veteran I 99% of the time you can recognize another veteran just on the way they act. If they're having a PTSD episode or if they are not comfortable it's very obvious. Certain indicators uh, they're going to be very agitated, they're going to be paranoid, uh, their body's going to be rigid, going to be ready for a fight, the fight or flight instinct has already kicked in, their eyes are going to be widened, the pupils going to be widened, darting, uh, they're going to act almost like a police officer in a situation because they're going to scan you for weapons. Uh, they're going to try to figure out where your weapons are, obviously, uh, in this sometimes even sets police officers on edge too. So when a law enforcement officer gets dispatched to a call and information has been gathered that there is a combat veteran there, um, unfortunately based on news events and things that are pushed out to the public, uh, there's usually an elevated level of concern. They don't know what to expect and safety is paramount for law enforcement officers. So there's kind of a double-sided coin here in that they respect the individual very much for the service that they've given to our country, especially those that have been overseas and in combat. But on the same coin, but the other side, they have concerns about where they're at, what condition they're in, um, how they're going to behave when they get there. Keys to a good officer-veteran interaction. Use police officers that are veterans if available. Slow the situation down. Be a good listener. Be empathetic and convey respect. Ask them about their service or their family. Get on their level. Allowing event ownership can provide a sense of control. The biggest thing to really think about when it comes to dealing with a veteran with post-traumatic stress disorder is establishing rapport as quickly as possible. Definitely have empathy for what they've been through and show some respect when it comes to their courage and loyalty that they displayed for our way of life. It's important as first responders that we always slow that situation down regardless of incident type that we have. So you have to have to talk their language, you have to calm them down, change subjects, start talking about family, how's your family doing? You know, get them out of the, the mindset that they're in to where they're starting to relax. Then you can keep going from that point. You've got to calm them down. The key is to, to know that that person is ready to explode, ready at any time. A couple of initial questions to ask a veteran, or if you think they're a veteran, ask them if they served. Where you were stationed at, what you did, where you went to boot camp. Try to talk about family, kids, stuff of that nature. There's been plenty of times where I've been working and I've actually been called over to another officer's complaint because they have a veteran that they're dealing with who is suffering from post-traumatic stress. Just being a veteran myself has been able to de-escalate situations a lot quicker than for a normal police officer to try to just calm somebody down, whether or not they're using calm, reassuring tones, what have you. Just going beyond the what's your name, what's your date of birth, what have you had to drink tonight? Have you done any drugs? Try to go three or four questions beyond that because I think it'll mean the world to them. And even if you can't relate to the military at all or didn't have any military family, at the very least you're showing that you care. Being highly accusatory, um, demeaning, is definitely going to be something that's going to set the person off. A lot of times I'll have them um, explain their own actions. And what that does is, uh, I feel, is it gives them a sense of, of control over that. Talk to them like you're talking to your partner. They're, they're going to, you know, respond a, a heck of a lot better if you're talking to them like a person. To gain trust with the individual, uh, I have to come to his level, wherever he is. I can never be superior to him. So if they're sitting, sit. 
Uh, if they're laying down, just try to get down with them so you're not a threat to them. But again, maintain your safety. Veterans who have been struggling have usually had other interactions with other law enforcement officers, and sometimes those have not been positive interactions. So between the two of them, there's already conflict in many situations. There's a tension, and that's got to be broken down. I would urge law enforcement officers to look at PTSD no differently than looking at someone in their own department that might have been shot or gotten a car wreck on duty. It's an on-duty accident. I think uh, it's very wise for law enforcement officers to not only remember this fact, but also show the vets the respect and empathy that they deserve, as they would one of their own in the same situation. Uh, PTSD, it's not a joke. They say 22 soldiers die a day, and most of them's because they're not getting the help they need for their PTSD. You know, we may get called to, you know, a house for, you know, the simple disturbance, and we've been there five, ten times, and it's a veteran, and then that veteran eventually commits suicide. There, there's steps that can be taken as first responders, whether it's just a drop a card for, you know, a hotline or something.